Hi, I'm Belle. I'm cooking vegan pad thai with you this evening. Okay, the key to this dish is to get super organised. So I'm hoping you found your way to my website and printed off your peanut and tofu pad thai step-by-step -step guide, which we're going to be using tonight. The reason we need to get super organised is because with any, any type of uh, flash fried Thai dish, it's the cooking time is minimal. It's the preparation time that's really, really important. If we don't get that right, then the danger is that we are gonna find ourselves with sloppy overcooked vegetables. So let's have a little checklist of what we need to create this fabulous dish. And we can very much separate this into two halves because we've got the sauce and then we've got the noodles plus the vegetables. So in terms of the sauce, we need our crunchy peanut butter. So with the crunchy peanut butter, we're going to use three tablespoons. Sounds like a lot. Remember this is serving two portions, but you need it. You need that crunchiness. You need that peanut satay flavor that's gonna meld with the chili and the ginger and the soy sauce and the honey to bring the dish together. Now, so three tablespoons of crunchy peanut butter. I'm using an organic version there, Whole Earth, which is just really gorgeous, really tasty. And then we need to sweeten up. So we're having a tablespoon of honey. And to contrast with sweetness, we need some salt. So I'm using a light soy sauce here, a tablespoon of this. And then something you might not be quite so familiar with is tamarind paste. However, you can buy this from local supermarkets. It's very widely available. And again, we're using a tablespoon of this. All of those flavors meld together by using lime juice and water. So, I've got mine pre-prepared. So whilst you're sorting that out, I'm gonna give this a stir. So I've got three tablespoons of peanut butter, one and a half tablespoons of lime, a tablespoon of soy sauce, tablespoon of honey. And at the moment it's looking like a muddy, sticky, kind of little beautiful satay sauce. Now bearing in mind this is gonna really bring the um, noodles and coat the noodles and kind of bring the noodles together with the vegetables, we need this to be a little looser. So what we're going to do is take a tablespoon, got all my cutlery organized there because you need a lot of tablespoons and a lot of different implements for this, a lot of different utensils for this dish. So you've got two tablespoons there of water and as you pop that in and start to mix it round, you'll see how beautifully it comes together and becomes more of a loose sauce which is going to coat the noodles rather than um, stick them together. So keep mixing that round. Make sure that it's, it's thoroughly combined. We don't want little packets of peanut butter or little pockets of um, tamarind paste. So really give that a really good stir. If you're preparing this dish for the kids, then uh, you might wanna give them that little job to do. Kids always like to make a little muddy mess, right? Just make sure it stays in the bowl, it doesn't get all over your kitchen. Okay, so at this point, you can see how that is just beautifully mixed together. Right, so we're gonna pop that to the side. That is our step one. Now let's have a look at step two. Trim the tender stem broccoli. Okay, so tender stem broccoli, we've got 200 grams of this and I have pre-prepared it. So when I get that organized, I'll talk about how this goes and what part of the tender stem broccoli we're going to use. Right, as you can see, we've got the florets and we've got the stalks. Now I'm a waste not, want not kind of person, so I love this recipe. I really don't like to discard bits of vegetables, particularly when they're so nutrient rich. So I've cut off the florets of the tender stem broccoli and I've separated them in a different bowl here from the stems. The reason being is because they've got a different cooking time. 
These will cook super, super fast, as opposed to these little stems, which you wanna get into one centimeter long um, chunks there, and put those into a separate bowl. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through mine, actually, and, and just make sure that they're nice and short. It's easy when you're chopping just to get a bit carried away, and if they're too long, they just won't have the same lovely crunchy effect. So I've got a few here that might be reaching that two centimetre point. I'm just going to give those a little bit of a chop. And I've got those ready to pop into the pan when the oil's nice and hot. Okay, so we've got step one, we've done the sauce. Step two, we've cut up the broccoli. Step three, this is where all those lovely Thai flavours come together. So as I talk through step three, I'm going to explain why these, some of these flavours, some of these um, components of the dish are so useful, not just in terms of flavour, but in terms of health. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to prep the garlic, ginger, chilies and the tofu. So let's start with my favourite, okay, so garlic. I'm using two fat cloves of garlic because I love garlic. It's hugely nutritious. It's a fantastic immune booster and I'm a big fan because it's, it's the flavoursome, um, the flavour that the garlic brings and plus the immune boosting properties really push me towards using always a little bit more than I need. And I don't care if it lingers on your breath. I mean, who cares really? It's just a fantastic superfood. So I'm using two fat cloves of garlic here and I've got my crusher and I've crushed those into a small pot in order that it's all ready to go when I've got the oil nice and hot. So here we go, got my little pots lined up here. I'm just crushing that in and leaving that to the side. Now watch to do that, I'm just gonna explain about garlic, my favorite superfood. So, you know, in, in today's interesting times that we're living through, we're all thinking about immune boosting and I like to focus on the types of superfoods that have been used traditionally for centuries and way beyond. Okay, so you can even look back at Egyptian times. If you were to look at inscriptions within the Egyptian pyramids, there are suggestions that garlic was used all the way back then to enhance uh, the strength and endurance of the workers who were building the pyramids. But also think about the Greek Olympics, you know, some of the early Greek Olympics, there's evidence that garlic was used to enhance uh, endurance and speed and strength. So think of that when you're choosing how many bulbs of garlic you're gonna pop in there. Of course, we need to be considerate of the person we're cooking for. This dish feeds two, so if you've got someone who's not so keen on garlic, then you might wanna back off a little bit. What I tend to do if I'm cooking for somebody who's not a big garlic fan, is I, particularly with the stir fry, I will pop in another bulb on top of my dish and just toss it through right at the end. Raw garlic, it's fantastic. Okay, so that's your garlic sorted. What about the ginger? So ginger, again, another gorgeous Thai flavor, which I always associate with my years in Thailand, um, you know, along with lime and peanuts and those really gorgeous pungent flavors. So I've got just a small piece of ginger here. It's fresh root ginger, so we don't need a huge amount of it. So it's about 1.5 centimeters in length. And I'm going to take a little grater, just the type of grater that you might use to grate Parmesan. And I've got my dish here, and I'm just gonna grate that in there and leave it to the side, along with my garlic. Okay, now we can move on to the chilies. Gotta be careful with your nails. It's so always very easy, isn't it, to grate straight off your nails there. Manage to not to do that. Okay, so chilies, again, be considerate. Who are you cooking for? I love chilies. I've got a chili of about this size. I've got a red chili of about that size. Remember the red one's slightly hotter and I'm using about half of that and I've sliced it up so it's in tiny, tiny slices. Now, whilst you're doing that, I'll just explain about chilli. 
Uh, I, I love chili because it really brings out flavors of the other components of a dish. But on top of that, it's very satiating. So it's one of the reasons it's been used in Asian dishes over the years. This is my understanding from chatting to people when I lived in Thailand. You know, a lot of those dishes are super, super hot. And the reason being is that when we eat a super spicy dish, we get fuller faster, it kind of tricks our appetite into being down regulated. So that's something you might want to consider. For me, it's all about that kind of pungent taste and really picking up the other flavours. Just combines beautifully with garlic and ginger. Okay, so I've got that to the side. My little checklist. Garlic, ginger, chillies, yes. And now we're on to tofu. Now this is the component of the dish that some of you might be a little bit wary of. You might have used it before, might have gone a bit sloppy in the pan, particularly when you're putting it into a stir fry dish. Now, don't be put off by this, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to cook with it this evening. Because once you get it right, it's such a great protein-rich item to add to your plant-based dishes. If you're transitioning from a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet, it's quite easy to leave behind the protein content, but, but don't, we really need a good amount of protein in our diet. So what we're looking for here is a firm type of tofu. There's lots of different types out there. The one that I'm using today is by a company called Blue Dragon. And again, this is widely available. I just bought it from my local supermarket. This will be on my website. So you'll get some brand names on there too. So when you're, Cooking for this um, this dish, if you you might be cooking along tonight, or you might be doing this in uh, just looking at getting some ideas and maybe doing this later in the week. Blue Dragon, extra firm silken style tofu. That's the one you want. Some of them are designed to be a bit more um, sloppy, let's say, a little bit more tender. Whereas this one, if you seal it in the pan first, will really hold together its textures. Okay, so what I've done is cut up the tofu into little chunks. So I've pre-prepared this. They're around um, 1.5 centimeters by 1.5 centimeters, little cubes, okay? So that's what you're aiming for. Now, if I were to just put this straight into a dish with a load of vegetables, just toss it around, yeah, it would probably fall apart and it wouldn't taste as good. It might be quite off-putting um, as, a, as a protein source, but actually what I'm gonna do is fry it off first. So we'll talk about how to do that. So we've got everything prepared and on my step-by-step -step guide, you will see that it says, put everything by the hob. So you've got everything in little dishes. It's within easy reach so that when you're flash frying, you've got those ingredients to hand. Noodles is the next thing we need to do. And again, you need to get this organized before you start cooking, but it's fine because it only takes four minutes. Now you've got a couple of options here. I'm using spelt noodles by a company called Biona, but you could easily use rice noodles if you were gluten-free. So spelt, of course, it's a great ingredient, but if you are gluten sensitive or you've chosen to avoid gluten for whatever reason, you can use any type of noodles you want to. So rice noodles would be a good option. But the key is your noodles that you're using could have a different cooking time to mine. So mine were simply just four minutes. So big pan of water, big pan of water on the hob. I boiled this water up to that boiling point, I put my noodles in there. I like the Biona type noodles because they're just in easy little squares and you use one square per person. So it's very easy to portion. A lot of noodles come in those kind of squares. So it's a good way to um, understand portion size. Four minutes, and it's important to keep by the hob during these four minutes, don't wander off and start doing anything because that's when your noodles can go a bit sloppy. As soon as you hit that four minute boiling point, we need to be draining the noodles, rinsing them in cold water, leaving them to stand for a couple of minutes, and then we can toss the noodles. You can see here, 
how they're lovely and separated. Now the reason that is, is because as they were sitting on the hob, I just drizzled some rapeseed oil over the top of them and tossed them through so they're not in any way sticking together. You can see here how they're all nicely separated. Now that's really, really important because if we're not, if we haven't separated the noodles properly, when you then come to pop them in the pan, they're, they're not going to take up the lovely satay sauce, the pad thai sauce that you've created. The pad thai sauce is quite sticky in itself. If you've got sticky pad thai sauce plus sticky noodles, you're just not gonna coat them as well. So give them a really good toss with your forks. Make sure they're all nicely separated. It's worth just spending a little bit of time on this. Really push them apart with your forks. Great, okay, I'm happy with those. I'm gonna put them over there and we can move on to the next stage. Right, so we cooked noodles and now we're on to step five. So we need to get our oil into the pan and what we're doing is using rapeseed oil here. So people often ask what's the best oil to use when you're heating. Well, my feelings on that is that let's just make sure any oil isn't heated in intensely to an intense heat. So rapeseed oil is what I'm using today. And I'm just going to drizzle it across my pan. You need a non-stick pan with a fitting lid for this dish. And I'm using a brush here and I'm just gonna brush the oil I've used around a teaspoon of rapeseed oil and I'm just making sure that my non-stick pan is nicely coated for when I put the tofu in there. We're going to seal the tofu before we cook anything else in this dish. I love this dish because you, it's just a one pan dish apart from the noodles you've just cooked but we don't have to keep taking things out of the pan and putting them back in. It's quite simple. Once you get organised, it's a simple dish. Okay, so I'm turning the heat up now till it's on a medium heat. I don't want to go above a medium heat because then the, com the compounds of the oil will be disturbed and it's not particularly health giving. So let's keep it on a medium heat. And we're gonna put these lovely little cubes of tofu in there. So they are in my pan. Taking a wooden spoon here and I'm just pushing those around. Now the plan is that we want to get all of the sides of the each cube to be golden brown because once they're golden brown they're sealed. Now it takes a little bit of time. We've got about five minutes on our hands so we're just making sure that is on a medium heat lid off at this point until we've got those um, little cubes of tofu nice and brown. Okay, so we're gonna keep close by because in a moment we're gonna hear them sizzling. So what can we do in the meantime? We're gonna get our spring onions organized. So spring onions I love for this dish. I've got three of them here and I've taken off the tops. And what I'm gonna do is slice them very finely whilst keeping an eye on my tofu. So a bit of multitasking to do here, but that's fine, we can all do that. Right, so I can hear this sizzling away now, which is fabulous. I'm getting a sharp knife and I'm going to slice these onions into really thin slices. I'm going to keep one of the sliced onions to one side because that's going to go on my garnish and the other two onions are going in the dish. So you can hear that tofu sizzling away there which is great. Chopping those onions. Now I can hear it sizzling so I'm just going to stop chopping the onions for a moment. So just toss tofu around a little bit so I because I want to toss it over so I get all the sides nice and brown. Something you might want to use which is very useful in this dish some of these because then you can 
Just flip them over. And that's starting to go nice golden brown now. So they've still got a few minutes left. So I'm going to continue to chop my onion. Starting to smell that gorgeous spring onion amidst all those other lovely Thai flavours. Okay. So I've got my spring onions all nicely chopped there. Something else I can be doing? After I've given my tofu a little stir. Yeah, it's coming along nicely now. I'm seeing those gold brown colours coming along. Is to get my lime. Taste that any fabulous Thai dish needs some lime, right? So um, we've already used lime in the juice to make the lovely pad thai sauce, but we need a little bit more. So at this point, get really organized for the end of the dish. Right at the end of the dish, we're gonna drizzle some lime, so it needs to be squeezed before we get to that moment. So I've got my lime juice here all organized. Need at least half, the juice of half the lime, okay? Because that really, right at the end, it really picks out the flavors. Great, coming along nicely. Quite noisy, you can hear that. Lovely splatter of flavour. Okay, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Right. So, a couple more minutes. What can we do? We're going to chop up some herbs. So, herbs, right at the end of this dish, just make it, they really, really do. I'm a big fan of herbs, they're full of antioxidants. Again, I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail about antioxidants, but enough said that they are fantastic immune boosters. Lots of brightly colored fruits and vegetables is what you need in your diet to get these fabulous components that we call antioxidants. Now, we often think of brightly colored vegetables as like orange carrots, red peppers, purple, um, purple sprouting broccoli, for example. But what about the greens? We shouldn't omit the use of herbs. Greens, again, vibrant colors are absolutely full of health-giving properties. So I've got three different kinds of herbs here. I've got this gorgeous sprig of mint out of my garden. I love going out there, just picking fresh, fresh herbs. I've got coriander. And I've also got basil. If you can get some Thai basil, that would be amazing. I haven't got any Thai basil, I've just got bog standard basil that is clearly not grown in my garden, but that would be great if it was. Um, just get as many herbs as you can and keep them on the side, because right at the end, we're gonna shove a load of herbs on as a garnish and on top of the dish. Oh yes, going really nice and Okay. Right, let's take a look at that. That, as you can see, is getting really nicely sealed. That is what we want. That's what we're looking for. Because if we haven't got that, we're just gonna have sloppy tofu and you're not gonna like it. Okay, really coming along now. Great. Again, just use some of these so you can Really have a good look at what's going on with your tofu. Because all of the sides ideally need to be brown. They look great. Starting to look really good now. Okay, while they're just finishing off, let's look at the instructions. So, once we have fried the tofu for five minutes and we've really sealed it and we're sure that each side is nice and golden, which mine now are. We can turn the heat, just turn the heat right down. Still gonna carry on browning, but what we're gonna do is pop in the ginger, garlic, and chili and cook for another two minutes. Now this is the moment when all of the flavors start to fill the kitchen. All of those gorgeous aromas. There also is that hazard that they do sometimes get a bit stuck to the back of your throat. So I've got a glass of water here just in case that happens. 
Right, so I've got my garlics going in. I've got my lovely chilies. And I've got my ginger. And I'm gonna give it a good stir. Cooking for two minutes. lid off at this point we don't need the lid on until we put the broccoli in once we put the broccoli in then um we're going to put the lid on with some water and let it steam my cat's just joined us in the background to do anything for retention right this is the bit where you can really feel those those um Aromas actually get to the back of your throat, so I'm going to stop now for a little bit of water just so I don't stop coughing. Okay, this is looking really good. So now we need to put the broccoli stalks in there, not the florets, because they only take a couple of minutes, whereas the stalks take a little bit longer. So we're putting those in there. We've got two tablespoons of water. You can hear that sizzling. Sounds amazing. Now at this point, put the lid on. And that's the way I like to cook stir fries because I've got the heat down. It's, it's I'd say it's low to medium heat, but because I've got those two tablespoons of water in there, I've got the lid on and it's steam cooking. So when we, have, we don't need it on those intense heats that you often have um, when you eat through a recipe that's for a stir fry. Right, let's go back to our step-by-step -step guide. What we're looking for now is we're looking for the stalks to go a little bit tender. Okay, so they're just in there. Tenderizing. We'll give it another little stir. Two minutes isn't long. Now, when you're stirring, just be careful. Be really just be gentle because if we go in there and do too much um, vigorous stirring then you break up the tofu and we want the tofu to remain in its cubes should be a little bit safer now because it's been sealed but I'd still be wary okay so what we do next is we put in the broccoli florets we put in the spring onions Remember to save some of the spring onions for when you do the garnish at the end. And now, this is the moment where we put our sauce in. Okay, so just before you put the sauce in, give it a really good stir. It's looking a little bit sticky. I'm going to put another splash of water in mine. Because from experience, that extra little splash of water actually makes it a lot easier when you are coating the broccoli. Think of all those broccoli florets, they've got quite a lot of um, surface area, let's say. So there we go. That's going in there, that just, oh, that just smells amazing, absolutely amazing. Okay, so this is where we need to be patient. You're going to need two spoons here. And you know, take a bit of time, gently, just pushing the sauce through all of the ingredients there. Because the rest of the cooking time is quite minimal. And we just want to spend a couple of minutes just coating those florets with this lovely, gorgeous, sticky sauce. That's looking really good now, looking really, really good. Okay, back to our instructions. You can see that you then, once you've really combined those, those different ingredients, you're gonna pop the lid back on and just give it two minutes. Now I can hear that the temperature's gone down I, because it's just not sizzling enough anymore and that's because I put the sauce in. So I'm just gonna bring that up till I can hear it. I just wanna hear a slight sizzle so I know the heat's enough for it all to be cooking through, otherwise it's just gonna go sloppy. Right, whilst I'm doing that, look at my instructions and we can see that the next thing we need to do is add the noodles. 
So the noodles are just here. You can see now why the beauty of this dish is to get really organized because at this point, if you're struggling with your noodles, you're gonna miss the point where the tender stem broccoli is, has still got bite to it. It will very easily overcook if we're not organized. Okay, that has had a couple of minutes. Now, what I'm going to do just whilst I'm waiting for the florets to cook in the sauce is I'm getting my carrot and I've got a peeler and I want some ribbons. So I don't want the carrot to overcook. I just want some more colour and I want a bit more texture and I want a bit more crunch. So I'm putting around five ribbons per person here. That's all you need. As a visual, it looks much nicer as well when you serve it up. Fantastic against the green of the spring onions and the broccoli and also the red of the chili. Lots of colour in a dish is just great. That's what plant-based eating is all about. Now we've got our noodles. So we're going to bring those over and we are going to pop them in there and very gently we're going to combine all of the flavours so the noodles aren't being left out, they need some of that gorgeous satay sauce. Okay, that's looking great. Really good. Lots of colour. Smells amazing. And it's very nearly done. Right, so. We really don't want to overcook that. So you need your plates at the ready. That is done. All I want to do with those noodles really is heat them up so they're the same temperature as the rest of the ingredients. So really, you just want um, a minute there. If you need to, you could just turn the heat up very slightly for the last couple of seconds, just to make sure the noodles are nice and warm. The whole dish is an even temperature. Okay, great. So I'm turning off the temperature now and I'm gonna grab my plate. Now on this plate, I have pre-prepared some greens. I've got some rocket, I've got some coriander, I've got mint and I've got basil, and I've got my little wedge of lime next to it, which is just, uh, leaves it optional to the person you're cooking for if they wanna add a little bit more lime. Now what we're gonna do is serve up and then think about how to finish the dish off. Smells amazing. And we just want to make sure we've got a nice amount of tofu on the top there. Fabulous. Now, remember the onions. We've got those leftover spring onions that we're going to sprinkle over the top. And then that big drizzle of lime. If you want to put some sesame oil over the top, that is great. I have got some sesame seeds just waiting here and I'm putting a sprinkle over there. I've got a teaspoon and when I say sprinkle, what I'm talking about is a, like a heat teaspoon of sesame seeds. They are a beautiful visual, but also they add a bit of texture and sesame seeds are really rich in calcium. So a great seed to add to your um, plant-based food plan. Okay, just as an extra, I'm popping a little bit of basil on the top just to make it nice and Instagrammable. And what we have is a beautiful plant-based pad thai where you've got the protein that you'd usually find in the shrimps and the egg you've got that in the tofu and the peanut sauce also. So it's really ticking a lot of boxes though in terms of nutrients. I hope you've enjoyed that and a good evening to you.